Hello and welcome to Going Deeper this week. Um, we are going to look at Luke 2, but before that I just want to pray. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would come, take my words and breathe your life into them. Speak to each and every person that is watching this today. Lord, have your way. Amen. So I'm going to start by reading our passage, uh, which is Luke 2, starting to read at verse 41. And in my Bible, it's entitled, Jesus Speaks to the Teachers. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to, to Nazareth. Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was with friends along with other travellers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they discovered him. He was in the temple sitting among the religious teachers discussing deep questions with them. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search, he answered. You should have known I would have been in my father's house. But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them and his mother stored all these things in her heart. So Jesus grew both in height and in wisdom and he was loved by God and by all who knew him. So in our Sunday um, talk, I made a parallel between the Home Alone 2 film and also my own um, situation of mislaying a child at a time. And knowing the, um, the pain and the anxiety that that causes um, really does come through in this story of Jesus' parents losing him. The feeling of ex exasperation on finding him in the temple is also really clear as he's sitting discussing questions with the religious leaders. In the talk I looked at being lost and how at times we too can feel lost, particularly in today's situation and how everything is changing so quickly one moment and then it seems to be nothing is happening and it feels like Groundhog Day. We have so many challenging situations to be dealing with and everybody's situation is different. Um, and we can lose ourselves sometimes in being a home educator, um, being a hermit due to having to shield or having to become an online tech um, <laughs> expert. There's so many challenges. But I've also heard, and I think Richard's touched on this, is that there seems to be a lot of talk around the acceleration of growth, the acceleration of what God is doing at this time in different areas. And history often tells us that when our back is against the wall, we often can find our own voice. We often question ourselves. We often uh, rally round each other and look at those who are in need. We reassess what's important in life. And at times, um, great things have come out of challenging times. I can personally say that for me, the times I found, found most challenging in my life have been the ones where I have gone off after God with greater passion and greater desperation. May, may I say that? When everything is potentially stripped away, we look at what's left. So Mary and Joseph, this was a challenging time for them. They had lost Jesus, their son, 
but he was also the saviour of the world, the Messiah. The one they've been tasked with to love and care for and bring him up in the Jewish tradition. Jesus was growing up and we know that at 12 years old, this was the age when boys would start to be instructed in their entry to the Jewish religious community. So this was a praxis point when Jesus the child became the teacher. The gospel story in Luke here is about growing up, but it's not about Jesus growing up. It's actually, I feel at this time, about Mary and Joseph growing up and about you and I growing up. Jesus was fully man and fully God, but we have been children and our time of growth is continual. Growing up has nothing to do with age, but it's about moving into a deeper relationship. Deeper relationship with God, with each other and with ourselves. Three very challenging areas of our lives. Growing up means we find out who we are in our place in, and our place in this world. What our priorities are and what we place value on and what we believe. And this, in my experience, is often highlighted in the teenage years when there's so much confusion around teenagers growing up, along with the hormones, and about where they belong and what their identity is and what the possibilities are. And the whole world around them can be pretty unnerving. But it doesn't actually stop there when we leave our teenage years. Along the way, whatever our age, we get lost. We make mistakes and we have to do a few U-turns and very occasionally we have to deal with a global pandemic. Jesus helps us to grow up. And even when we're lost, we can be found in God, making choices to put down deeper roots, to make choices to be found in him. These are not always easy, but throughout the scriptures, throughout the Bible, there's lots about us growing, um, feeding on spiritual milk and growing. 1 Samuel um, says, And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature, and in favour with the Lord and his people. So here in this passage in Samuel, we see the three as we see in the end of Luke 2. Luke 2.52 says, So Jesus grew both in height and in wisdom, and was loved by God and all who knew him. Here in Samuel, we hear about Samuel's physical growth, his growth with the Lord and the community. And that's what God calls us into. As a mother of two adult boys now, I can say I've learned a lot from them. Children have a way of doing that to their parents. Um, they see the world differently. They question us. They question the status quo around. And this can be painful. As a parent, when your children don't conform or you can't, um, or they don't choose to go the path that you are hoping them to take. It can be really frustrating. But this is part of our growth. And I think I've learnt possibly more from my boys than they, poss than they ever did um, from me. As Mary and Joseph found Jesus in the temple, in his father's house, Jesus was challenging their status quo, saying, why did you worry? Why did you not think I would be here in my father's house, discussing teaching about the kingdom with others? Where else would I be? What else would I be doing? Growing up spiritually involves leaving our comfort zone, letting go of what is safe and familiar and moving into a place of greater faith and trust. When we're in times like this and we don't understand, this growth can be accelerated. But there will be choices to make, and I've had to make a few of these 
really difficult choices about how to spend my time. Letting go of things that are unnecessary and may even hinder our growth. And sometimes these can be fear or faulty thinking or behaviours, even apathy and indifference. Whatever they are, we don't need them. And we certainly don't need them in our father's house. When we're found in our father's house, we can know ourselves and each other to be his beloved children, created in his image and called to be like him. So the invitation to move in is there. So why don't we? In our father's house, our place is set at the banquet table. I love that picture. And his home is full of rooms called mercy, forgiveness, joy, love, beauty, generosity and compassion. It really caught my imagination thinking of giving each of the rooms in my home a name like that. But when we move into our father's house, we can't take everything we want. When we move a physical house, it requires a big clear out, a big sort out. And I know that a lot of people have taken the opportunity in lockdown to be decluttering. Even a corner um, it feels good. Or a room. I've been trying to clear kitchen drawers out in a random order, which is part of my personality. But clearing out, but this clearing out is different. This means letting go of an identity that is limited to our biological family or our job or our community reputation or our ethnic group or our political party and trusting that who we are is who we are in God. And this means that it stops us relating to each other by comparison, competition, or judgment and beginning to relate to each other through love and self-surrender and vulnerability and it also means letting go of fear about the future and discover what God is here what what God is here in the present and all that shall be well and I love that passage in Isaiah 3 it says all shall be well keep coming back to that time and time again all shall be well. That's Isaiah 3.10. It's uh, something I'm meditating on daily at the moment. And here we stop remunerating on the past guilt, regrets, sins, and be able to accept the mercy and forgiveness of God and each other. And then we see our life not in opposition to others, but is intimately related to and dependent on others. And this is where the body comes into place, the body of Christ. We're meant to live, we're not meant to live alone in God's house. We are together, as they were in our passage, discussing, arguing, debating, encouraging, sharing their lives with each other. Jesus was sat with the religious leaders, discussing the theology, discussing um, what it means for the here and now. I'm challenged at these, um, during these times, to look at the little houses that we can sometimes live in. We sometimes build a little house that's not of God's house. And we sometimes get stuck in that. We get bound up in our life, stif which stifles our growth, and it keeps us from the Father's house. What might you have to leave behind in order to grow up, to mature and to move into the Father's house? It's a very challenging question, the one I've been asking myself, and at times I've not really um, embraced the answer as quickly as I know I should. And these can be very hard questions, painful questions. But ultimately, they are questions founded in love. And I want to encourage each one of you to 
trust to find trusted friends in a small group or in the going deeper sessions to make us to make a start on those conversations ask God to highlight within you what it is that's stopping your growth maybe uh, the small group and the going deeper sessions uh, feel a little bit uh, a step, maybe a step too far you're not ready for that to be so honest and vulnerable in them but be reassured they these people love you they want to encourage you and build you up but if you still want to um, discuss it but just on a one-to-one -one, invite a friend to your garden for a coffee ask them ask them to be honest with you to be open with you as they love you they want to see you grow they want to see you get rid of all the clutter of all the things that may be holding you may be hindering your walk with Jesus we all have struggles we all have areas that we're not aware of at the moment God I'll be very honest with you God highlighted something to me early on in lockdown that um, I was acting like a spoiled child I couldn't do what I wanted to do I couldn't go where I wanted to go I couldn't meet people I wanted to meet and I felt it wasn't fair I understood how all the restrictions were for the greater good and for my good but still deep inside there was this little spoiled child who struggled and I, I shared it with Mike and he said well it's not it's not something that's often shown not something that you show or live in but it was something that was hidden that was starting to show itself and I knew I needed to take that to God I knew I needed to pray through um, how that was hindering me how I was feeling unsettled and like a spoiled child does feeling like I wanted to have a tantrum occasionally when things weren't going my way and that's what a child does uh, particularly a spoiled child so um, I was able to to deal with the spoiled child to ask God um, what the root was and to to put it to bed really and to hopefully grow through that experience so each one of us will have things um, that we're blind to at times ask God who they are and what they are and meet with a friend somebody you know loves you and wants the best for you and can encourage you in this way we'll struggle to grow if we're being held back by these things in the home alone film as i talked about earlier kevin and his brother buster have a really difficult relationship buster's almost like the older brother who's a bit of a bit of a bully really but in the end, Buster saw the good in Kevin and saw the good that Kevin had done in the film for the greater good, for the whole family. And it was really a beautiful time when they were almost, you know, closer than they'd ever been before. And they, they'd drawn together. And Buster was able to put aside his own ego and build that bridge in that relationship. Mary said to Jesus, back to our passage, I'm flitting from one to the other, Mary said to Jesus, Child, why have you treated us like this? And I'm wondering whether Mary felt let down by Jesus at this point. And there may be times when we question God. Why God? Why are you letting this happen? The lament psalms are full of crying out to God in our own pain, in our own suffering to God, asking why. God invites us to do this. God wants each one of us to have that level of depth, of trust, of relationship with him. God wants each one of us to be able to be honest with him about our feelings and our frustrations. We will all have frustrations at this time. We will all have feelings of um, why God. But when we look to him, 
he is faithful and he will answer. And I think in this passage, when Mary asked the question, why have you done this to us? God's question is, God's answer is, because I love you. I love you enough to grow you up, to find you when you're lost and to bring you with me into the Father's home. God's ultimate plan is to bring each one of us home, each one of his children back to him. If we are to share our faith with others, if we are to grow as children of God at this time and beyond, we need to know that there are things that God will bring into the open, that he wants us to deal with, he wants us to grow and to mature, but he never wants us to do it on our own. He wants us to be in community. He wants us to be growing spiritually and he wants us to be open to all that he has for us. At the beginning, I said sometimes it can feel like Groundhog Day. It can feel like Groundhog Day. I saw a quote on Twitter this week where Alan Hirsch said, seize the Groundhog Day. Take every day that God gives us to say, God, where are you growing me? Where have I got a little bit lost at the moment? Where do I need your direction? And who will you send to be able to sit with me and help me grow in this time? So I hope you will join me and others uh, for the Growing Deeper discussions. And I pray that as you sit in your father's house over the next few days that you can ask him where am I lost and where am I to be found and what are the things you want to grow within me at this time these are all good questions all good questions that I'm asking of myself and of God at the moment so I hope that you'll share in that with me amen